Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Contextual 101 podcast series. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the impact of the death of the cookie and more specifically from a brand's perspective. I'm delighted to be joined by Richard Kanalik. Richard began learning his digital advertising craft during his four years at the Seven Stars Agency, later moving to Omnicom Media Group, working on brands like VW. He then left the agency world to go client side. Um, and he made the switch to, to Vodafone to head up the programmatic function for the UK and lead their in-housing project. Hi, Richard. How's it going? I'm very well, Dar. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. Not too bad. As, uh, as I just mentioned, it's uh, the weather is really bad here in the UK. So, uh, yeah, don't know what to wear, <laughs> don't know what clothes to put on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, not too bad. I'm indoors, so not, not stuck in the rain. No, typical British summer, eh? Exactly. Um, so, Rich, yeah. Thanks for thanks for joining us today on on today's podcast. Um, it's obviously a super hot topic right now: death of the cookie, contextual advertising, um, and we've obviously known each other for a few years now, even from your days at agency side. Um, but yeah, I think just to start, it'd be great to understand your role now and what you've been doing over at Vodafone. Yeah, no, absolutely. I guess I've been here since November two thousand and nineteen. So yeah, coming up to two years. You know, initially came in here to lead the in-house project. So, you know, there was talk with Vodafone, you know, in-housing the biddable media for a couple of years in the industry before it actually happened. Uh, so, yeah, the day one was kind of building a team and then leading that in-housing project. Now now we're in and we're here. We're fully migrated over as of kind of March 2020. Uh, you know, we've been trying to grow that organically, trying to trying to get the business to understand, you know, what programmatic is and, and really try and, you know, push the digital side of, of what we're doing here at Vodafone. How has that change been, um, agency side to client side? I, I know a, a few people have kind of followed in your suit, really, and, and made that change. You, you don't see it as much uh, agency side, maybe going to media owner side. You, you see a lot of the agency people going over to client side. So how, how have you found that kind of shift? Yeah, no, it's been a nice step change from from agency life. I think there's a lot more uh, exposure to to, to the, uh, the business in general. So obviously, agency side, it's, it's very much focused on the media. And, and obviously, it is here within the media team at, at Vodafone, but there's much more kind of, um, you're not stuck in. I guess, you know, when you're in a programmatic team, you're kind of at the end of the chain and it all comes through the different kind of teams at agency side, whereas... Uh, at client side, in my experience, you, you can kind of have those conversations direct and, and try and perhaps influence a little bit more. And I think that's what's so appealing about, about um, working client side. You, you, you get that exposure and you get that kind of uh, authority, I guess, to try and, you know, influence change. Yeah, I, th- I think that's that's a good point there. I think it's um, it's also interesting to just work on one brand. Like I've never done that. Um, I've worked 10 years in programmatic, sim- similar to you. But yeah, it's, it must be interesting just focusing on one brand and really yeah. seeing that develop and, and and actually making that difference within the team. Is that is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. Thing, so. you can, yeah, you can dedicate your time to, to like seeing your, your work, you know, change what's happening one year to next year. And yeah, really, you get really under the bonnet into the brand and, you know, what it means for the brand. You can focus more on the creative side of things and the media side of things and the technology side of things. So it all kind of comes together and, yeah, it all into one brand that you're working on rather than your time being split between you know diff- different clients and and obviously your background before Vodafone was working agency side working in mm-hmm. programmatic teams mm-hmm. a, a trader level manager level ha, you know going back to the point that the whole podcast is about and it's about cookies and contextual targeting but when it relates to cookies how often was were they used in your day-to-day optimizations um, working media owner side I never really saw the the ins and outs of a DSP and and the way the traders would be optimizing but how often would you yeah how would how often would you use the cookies in your day-to-day yeah I, I mean they, they were they were the backbone of a successful campaign really and most of the time when running programmatic campaigns on the clients I've worked on it, it's more DR led activity so you look you look into drive conversions and obviously cookies enable you to kind of measure and track uh, consumers across across the web so they really did they really were the cornerstone of, of how we you know ran successful campaigns whether that's from a retargeting point of view or, or you know look like audience point of view you know with cookies you know collecting so much information you know from location interests age gender um, you know they allowed us to, to reach a precise audience with also ads that were relevant to them so 
all in all, cookies really were, you know, pivotal and, and central to, to what we did anyway, agency side. There's obviously kind of anomalies where you ran campaigns which were more brand led. Uh, but at the time I was working agency side, it was predominantly, a, you know, a bottom of the funnel uh, DR led approach, which most clients were, were using programmat- programmatic to, to run their campaigns for. And, and how savvy would you say these clients were that you were talking to on a day to day and uh, and, you know, giving them these rich insights from the data that you gather from cookies is is that something that the brands wanted uh, that they needed from from the agency it, it would vary from client to client you'd, you'd get some clients who were really into the detail and wanting to understand you know everything that you were doing from a programmatic point of view to you know live demos within the dsp they really wanted to you know wanted us to articulate to them what it was we did and how we added value as, a, as an agency and there were other clients um, that just wanted to know what the, you know, what the CPA was or, you know, what their kind of core KPIs were so they could perhaps report that back up, up their chain. So it really was a mixed bag, to be honest with you. And it differed between, you know, it wasn't kind of a rule that the big clients wanted X and the small clients wanted X. It kind of really was depending on, you know, I guess the philosophy of, of them as a client and, and kind of how they use, how media, how important media was to them. Um, and fast forwarding to Vodafone now in your role, how, how often do you guys use use cookies now are you guys using it them at all yeah we are still u- using cookies um and i think until they are you know gone from the ecosystem i think there'll always be a, a reliance on them or i think there's no need to stop using them whilst they're still there because they still provide you you know valuable insight but but as a preparation in in the build-up to the deprecation of third-party cookies you know we're re-evaluating how we're using you know programmatic and really uh digital media as a channel and, and one of the things that we took out from that is that we need to stop focusing on on the short term where we're looking at you know last click and even multi-touch attribution as a solution and start looking more uh, at the long term uh, where we're using you know measurement solutions which don't rely so heavily on the third party cookie if at all so things like brand left studies and uh, econometrics we're really able to kind of shift brand perception over a longer term rather than just focusing on what our last touch CPA was or what our you know multi-touch attribution CPA is um, and that will hopefully help us you know evolve the channel into you know more of a brand-led approach and being able to you know increase and improve ROI in the long term rather than just you know hit an arbitrary cost per acquisition figure which which may look like it's providing value for the business but actually when you look at the econometrics you know are you are you returning a positive ROI and and that's the kind of journey we're on at the moment and that's kind of the step change we're making as as a business and, and as a channel uh, to help ready ourselves for the eventuality when there, there is no third party cookies for us to to rely on those kind of more um you know simplistic i guess i can call them now uh, attribution solutions and, and what's your opinion on the alternative solutions now to the cookie um do you have a have a preference um what what yeah what's your opinion and i suppose what what is vodafone doing as well in, in that space across um all the different options that are now available yeah. i think obviously there's going to be like a key a few key universal id and, and identity players uh in the market um as a whole though i think you know it's going to be more i guess the attribution is going to become more probabilistic than deterministic so aggregated insights such as cohorts which are kind of the next best thing off the back of cookies but i think i think they're all gonna be kind of the first iteration of what's next so i think the first thing which comes after cookies is never going to be the best it's going to take time for you know a robust solution uh to you know inspire the industry and everyone you know you talk to has already said even with their own their own solutions like there is no you know silver bullet it's going to take a, an array of different solutions and different partners to be able to kind of plug the gap which 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 were cookies but from my view i think i think you know we need to move into that longer term view which which uh, takes us into kind of the brandless surveys and, and the econometrics type of uh, measurement to, to, to be able to deliver something which is as profound as what cookies were enabled to do for us and and on that point uh, with the various different studies that you can do have, have you done many at Vodafone have you seen any results from um, alternative solutions and how impactful they've been on the performance of your campaigns so again sorry in terms of so in terms of the uh, the impact and uh, have you got any results from any res- uh, any brand lift studies that you've carried out 
Yeah, we're doing there's, there's a few different segments at Vodafone, and we're looking to run, you know, things like Millwood Brown or, or the independent studies, which you know the tech partners that we work with. And what we're trying to do now is use it in a more strategic way. So, you know, maybe in the past you'd run a brand list survey, you'd get the results, and you kind of wouldn't strategically think, okay, what can we do differently to impact that? It's kind of a retrospective thing on that particular activity that you ran. And I guess working uh, at one brand, at client side, you're able to then say, actually, so this when we run this next time, even next month, next quarter, or next year, these are the results we've seen. We're, we're raising awareness, but we're not raising familiarity. So what do we need to change about the creative, or about the strategy, or about the targeting, which is gonna enable us you know, push people down that funnel off the back of you know the the brand lift surveys that we're seeing, and that's kind of where it's what we're seeing at the moment. We're we're starting to shift awareness and mm-hmm. and the favorability, but perhaps you know not consideration or not intent. So it's kind of that journey which is um, allowing us to to you know change what we're doing. Yeah, I, I definitely think that, and obviously we work together, SeaTag and Vodafone, and we've mm-hmm. seen that especially in the the telecom space, Vodafone is leading the way when it comes to uh, pushing pushing people like us, you know, f- f- for, for all these types of studies and results and mm-hmm. uh, benchmarking it against, you know, previous cookie targeting. Um, have you, do you think yourself at Vodafone, obviously you're going to be a little bit biased, but have, mm-hmm. do you see that you guys are doing this and Vodafone's doing this a lot more than other competitors in the industry? Um, are, you, are you kind of seeing that at the moment? Yeah, I think we always try and innovate and try and like stay at the forefront of the market. Um, especially being like away from agency side, you really need to like keep your head focused on what, what's going on because you're you're a step removed from kind of the epicenter of of kind of innovation, I guess. But I guess at Vodafone, we're quite lucky that we have a wealth of you know you know first party data and kind of teams dedicated to uh, this particular topic. So we, we're in the in the midst of uh, onboarding you know a CDP. So we can so we can then tap into that wealth of first party data. But yeah, no, I definitely think we're doing what we can to to stay at the forefront of the industry. Yeah. Um and then I think we have to talk about this, right? We have to talk about the pandemic and COVID and mm-hmm. the impact that it's had on on Vodafone. Um what we've seen on our side is it, it was interesting, I think, at the start of last year. A lot of brands were a little bit scared to run digital advertising. A lot of budgets were cut. Um, but then as it just started to be the norm, you know, our day-to-day life has changed even now over a year on. Um, we're still talking about the pandemic and we're still factoring it in in, in many different cases. Um, but we're starting to see, you know, just a change in strategy really from from these brands because they know COVID is here, is here to stay. Um, there's been a you know, a lot of noise about um, obviously the vaccines and opening up travel and especially in the UK, July 19th, there's a date where apparently everything will open back up again. Um, so are, are you seeing, are you, how, how are you seeing that brands and including Vodafone, how, how, you, how have you guys been tackling COVID and the pandemic over the past year and a half? Yeah, I guess from a telecoms perspective, uh, perspective it's, Everyone needs internet and everyone's got their mobile phone. So as, as an industry, I, th- I think we were quite lucky that, that we were probably one of the industries which were least affected uh, by COVID. But as, as a business, we, we decided to continue to invest in media during the pandemic when some of our competitors didn't. Uh, we saw it as an opportunity to try and, you know, gain market share uh, and really push home, you know, what Vodafone, what Vodafone means. Obviously, from a business point of view, you know, you know, revenues affected roaming well, you know it makes a big chunk of the telecoms revenue which was obviously put on hold for the last kind of year 18 months but but really you know from a media point of view we continue to to advertise and continue to run campaigns and even kind of expedite some of the the company's kind of longer term ambitions which were to tackle you know di- digital exclusion so launching initiatives to i think it was to help connect a million people that were living in you know, digital poverty by the end of 2022 so i think used it also as an opportunity to to try and give back and to the community too and historically were vodafone running a lot of offline campaigns and uh, and the reason i ask is did you then see that speed up in terms of digitalization and more and more people are at home now so vodafone might have thought okay in, in the next three to five years we need to i suppose connect with our consumers more online versus offline but you've had to do that a lot quicker now because of covid um have you have you done that or are you still using 
uh, your offline strategies for advertising and to connect to your consumers? Yeah, I, th- I think it's a bit of both. I think obviously it's been expedited and, and the emerging channels such as, you know, connected TV and digital radio um, and how you activate that and how you kind of run a, uh, a strategy that aligns your offline to your online and an integrated campaign against different, you know, media channels is kind of what the big question is and, and how are we doing that? And I think we need to a, not rush into it because you want to run a campaign where your measurements and your KPIs are, are there in place for you to be able to do that. But yeah, no, it's definitely something that we've looked to do more of in terms of that digitalization and, and, and where and how we're spending. Yeah. Well, we were looking at a, a study that was um, done by TAG today and they mentioned that 85 consumers would reduce or stop building, or, or sorry, buying products um, if they were associated with any COVID, COVID uh, conspiracy theories or misinformation. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know that was, again, probably this time last year. Is that something that came to your guys' team and, and mind as well when you guys were building out your strategies? We just try to avoid <laughs> serving across that, that content. There was some funny messages sent around in the WhatsApp group when we were <laughs> around 5G conspiracy. But um, no, I think it's saying that more the organic social team looks to try and, you know, manage that that sentiment uh, online when they see that and when there's people kind of accusing Vodafone of of, of all, all sorts of conspiracy nonsense. Mm-hmm. And, and, and in terms of the last year and a half, have you... Had, have you had to shift your focus so before it might have been focusing on certain certain things like in store or um you know more physical product selling have you had to shift that due to covid are you are you kind of pushing more products now than uh, or different products now versus what you were maybe a couple of years back yeah i think the focus is on like what the proposition and kind of what what prop comes with the products so and what are the benefits of each product if that makes sense. It's not so much like the price point potentially. It's more around kind of why, why Vodafone. What what do the products offer you above and beyond the competition? Mm-hmm. Um, kind of relaying this back to contextual advertising. Mm-hmm. What are you guys seeing, and what are you guys doing um, in that space? And are, are you seeing the benefits? Is is the brand seeing the benefits of running contextual advertising? You know, absolutely. And I think from a contextual point of view, obviously, the, as a strategy, it's been around, you know, it's not it's not a new strategy, but I think the the technology behind it is obviously improving and being expedited, I'm sure, because it's become such a focus now for the industry where maybe it took a bit of a back step, you know, several years ago. You know, but when we in house, we made that move to contextual anyway, because personally, I think, you know, it's a much more accurate and, and, and cheaper way to, to reach your audience. But what we've been doing our side is is tapping into and pushing our partners, you know, like yourself for like, how can we run, test and learn contextual approaches? What's what's best in class? What's best practice? And, you know, it's been a mixed bag. Sometimes, you know, we see some really, really good results. Uh, and, and other partners, you know, it's, it's a little, little longer way to go in terms of kind of how they're using it from a contextual point of view. We're just looking to incorporate contextual as much as we can across an array of different formats, you know, pre-bid segments which contextual partners offer to, to you know to high impact formats that we run with yourselves it's just really so we can run a full funnel approach when it comes to contextual advertising and we have kind of a foolproof way of reaching our audience and delivering a campaign without re- the reliance on cookies have you seen any other brands in other industries where they've done this well that you've seen um whether it's just you browsing on the web or um, I don't know. Seeing TV advertising is—is is there are there any brands that you can think of that have run contextual advertising and done it well? Uh, put me on the spot here. Let me. Cut. I'm not. I'm not sure off the top of my mind to be honest. Al. Yeah. No. We, we've seen um, various different brands, right? So uh, at, at, at the start of COVID and, and the pandemic, early early last year, we saw. Um, many different brands trying to, re- you know, get closer with their, their their consumers by adapting and changing the creative as well as the targeting. So, um, yeah, whether it's travel brands, whether it's telecoms brands, FMCG brands, they wanted to really connect with their users and uh, and reassure them that they're by their side and they're they're working together um, during this difficult time. Um, I think there were some brands I think that totally ignored the pandemic and just carried mm-hmm. on like normal. 
I think there was a different bucket of, of brands that um, adapted it and changed it to uh, their yeah to, to the situation. Um, and then some obviously just completely stopped advertising completely. So yeah, I think a brand would usually fit within uh, within those three different buckets. Um, I've got a final question for you. So mm-hmm. with the death of the cookie, what do you think the future is for for brands? Um, yeah, it'd be good to understand, kind of get your take on that. Yeah, look, I, th- I think the future's bright. I think obviously with the third party cookie being there, it's a great way for brands advertisers to default to something which was was not perfect but 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 work for the most part so i think going forward it it should and has already inspired innovation in terms of kind of cookie alternatives such as on device on device solutions and universal id solutions so there's in, innovation already coming and, and i think we need to remember that most emerging channels aren't aren't cookie based connected tv digital audio you know even mobile in app which has obviously been around it's been the year of the mobile every year for a while now but that's that's not cookie based either so i think moving away from a cookie based approach will allow us to um you know perhaps bring in some real world uh kpis to our media and and potentially media can become more than the sum of its part and and really start to push the boundaries of of what we're able to to deliver yeah i think that's a that's definitely a good point there's so many other um advertising mediums out there tv and audio and, and, and various other ones where um uh, the, yeah they like you said they don't need the cookie so yeah i i think it's kind of just changing that mindset really isn't it in yeah. in, in, in shifting that across yeah absolutely. um okay okay brilliant so no thank thanks for your time um today uh that's all we've got time for to, in today's podcast um so yeah rich we'll, we'll speak soon absolutely thanks Dal.